Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're going to meet the son of Jesse today. So we're at 1 Samuel 16, 12 and 13. Let's hear it. Of course, we know what's going on, right? God has provided himself a king to replace Saul. Samuel has gone there to see which among the sons of Jesse it is. The, the, all the older sons have come before him, but there's one left. And they send for him. So let's see what the answer is. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now there's some things here that aren't quite uh, correct. I mean, they aren't quite the, the, most, the most friendly way, right? You know? Remember how we do our schoolwork today? Every kid in the class, no matter how good or how bad his work is, he gets an A and, and we give him a smiley face. Here, it's it's none of the older guys. They've all passed before Samuel. It's none of them. But here comes the, the runt, you know, the little guy, the, the youngest kid. And, oh, it's him. And so what happens? Uh, they don't send the other brothers out to kind of spare their pride. Instead, maybe they needed a lesson here, a lesson in the right way. And right in the midst of them, the whole family's there. And uh, at least all the men folk are there. And what do they do? Samuel anoints David to be king. <laughs> so, yeah, this wasn't the best day for the eldest son. It's like, well, I, I don't like to see that. I should be the guy. You'd think, and a lot of people think because they have seniority, uh, that they're the oldest or whatever it is, that they, they're they're going to be the one. But that's not the case here. It's the youngest one. Many times again in the Bible, we see this, this reversal, this 180 degree reversal. The thing you expect, it's the opposite from that. And here, instead of being the oldest son, it's going to be the youngest son. Uh, arise, anoint him. This is the one. And so they did it in the midst of his brothers. And then we learn that the Spirit of the Lord came in, a, in another way, a unique way, a special way upon David. From that day forward. So this is a, a beginning, a new beginning for Israel. And it's happened right here among the many brothers and the father and the family. Pretty intense spot there. God did not spare their pride. God is trying to actually help them learn something that perhaps is a lesson they haven't learned that maybe David already has. So again, God is looking for a man after his own, yes, after his own heart. And it's going to be David. Not Eliab or these other guys. So we want for us, what, how do we apply this for ourselves? Well, sometimes we perhaps need to be embarrassed, like maybe some of the older guys were embarrassed here, so that we actually learn something. If we tiptoe through life all the time and we never have any, any experiences where we're humbled or uh, our pride is abased, we, we might not learn too well. We might not learn too fast. So God here doesn't spare these older guys. He just says, well, it's not you. It's this guy. So now we have young King David, and we notice the promise that the Spirit of God came upon him. You know, when you choose to serve the Lord and you choose unambiguously to serve him, what? He will put his Spirit upon you for all the missions he has for you in this life. So let's seek him. Let's be fully on his side, and let's let the Lord be our leader. Let's pray. Your Father in heaven, thank you that you've provided a king there among the sons of Jesse. It wasn't what anybody expected, but there he was. Lord, you put your spirit upon him. Lord, many of us are very humble. We're very, uh, not the first or the second or the third or the sixth guy in line. Well, we need your spirit to help us to be courageous, help us to be bold for the kingdom, give us wisdom in how we do things. And then, Lord, you use us in whatever capacity, somewhere between a king and the lowest guy, whoever that is. Lord, use us in that way. Thank you that we could ask you to just use us in some way in your kingdom for your glory. And now, Lord, help your people, just as you're helping Israel in the time we're reading. Help us today in our day, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord use you and I today in our different places, wherever we are in the vineyard, for his kingdom. And God be with you.